Que pasa amigos and bienvenidos a Professional Photography Tips. My name is Joshua Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now today we're going to do another lightning fast five minute Photoshop walkthrough. I'm going to show you exactly how you can take a photo like this and turn it into this in five minutes in Photoshop. So are you ready? Hold on your seat, buckle your seat belt and strap in. Let's get ready to go. First things first, we've got to open this sucker up in Adobe Camera Raw. All right, now we got the image open in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm gonna talk really fast because we got a lot to get through in the next five minutes. You can notice that this photo is really dark and that's because basically I stumbled out of my car, ran down to the lake shore and I slapped my camera down without really checking my settings. I took a picture and it was the best one of the night. After this, the light faded, but it was obviously underexposed. So let's see what we can do about that. First things first, I'm just gonna increase the exposure until I notice the highlights here in my histogram starting to clip right about there. And to counteract that, I'm gonna pull the highlights here down. The other thing I'm going to do, I really like nice even exposure across my frame, so I'm going to drag my shadows up to bring out some of the shadows there in the foreground. Same with the blacks. Now you can see the image is starting to look a little washed out, so I'm going to add a little bit of clarity. That will help with local contrast, a little bit of vibration, <laughs> vibration, uh, and uh, vibrance and saturation to add a little bit of punch. Okay, now the image is still a little bit flat, so let's go over here to our tone curve and add some global contrast. Highlights go up, shadows go down. Now we've got global contrast. But eh, my sky is looking a little bright. My foreground is still looking a little dark. So let's jump back here. Highlights down, shadows up. Foreground is still a little bit dark. So what we can do, add a graduated filter. Let's put that from there to there. We'll just drag the exposure up a little bit to bring out that foreground. Drag the contrast up so it doesn't get washed out. Add a little bit of clarity, saturation. And yeah, that looks pretty great to me. Now, overall, the image is looking very, very cool. I'm a kind of guy who likes a nice, warm image. So let's drag this up, 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 up. Hey, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes when I'm feeling a little saucy, I'll throw in a dash of magenta. I'm not afraid to do it. Boom, magenta. I like it. Sweet. And okay, cool. Now looking at the image, I think overall looks pretty good. Uh, I I think that the coolest parts of the image are the warm light here in Mount Dana and Mammoth Peak kind of peeking up here in the background. So how can we emphasize those? Empath emphasize with the emphasize. Oh, we're gonna go to lens corrections. We're gonna add a little bit of vignette on the edges just to pull attention towards the center. Maybe that's too much. That looks better. Now let's open this sucker up in Photoshop. We'll get to the credits here in just a second, so ignore this slide for now. Okay, great. Now because I brightened up that foreground so much, there's going to be a fair bit of noise. If I zoom in, you can see, yeah, it's kind of grainy. So let's run a filter. I like Neat Image. It's a aftermarket plugin. It's not expensive, but it does generally a fantastic job of getting rid of noise. Let's see how it does for this image. Not too bad. I've seen better. I've seen worse. But you know what? I'm not going to stress about it for now because I'm not making a 40 by 60 print of this sucker. Okay. Overall, this looks pretty good, but I want to draw a little bit of attention to Mount Dana and Mammoth Peak. So how am I going to do that? Easy. I'm going to add a burn dodge layer. Kabam. Now I'm going to grab a nice bright color from the sky. How about that one? And yes, let's make it a little bit brighter. Now with a low opacity brush, 20% I'm going to paint on that burn dodge layer. And I do have a video about this. Check the link that uh, is popping up in the annotation right now about how to do this to your own photos. So I'm going to paint during burn and dodge right here to bring out some more attention on those two peaks. But I don't like the way it's made the image look washed out. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Go up here to image, apply image. And that's going to apply the burning dodge only to the brightest parts of the image. As you can see there, that's my mask. So it adds just a little bit more attention to those spots. Okay, fantastic. Now, the last thing maybe I'd like to do is the sky's looking a little bright. I wouldn't mind if it was a little more contrasty. So how can we do that? Easy peasy. Let's grab a curves adjustment layer. Grab the targeted adjustment tool. We'll drag some of the shadows in the sky down. We'll drag some of the highlights in the sky up just to increase that contrast, color saturation in the sky. Did it do it? Yes, it did, but it made the rest of the image look really chunky. So how can we apply it just to the sky? We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to, in fact, this time I'm going to hold Alt or Option. Click on this layer mask thumbnail and drag it on the curves. It'll ask me, do I want to replace that layer mask? And say, you bet your sweet bippy I do. So now this is what the mask for my curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go ahead and take a black brush at a fairly high opacity, and I'm going to be really sloppy. Slop, 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 and I'm just going to paint out this bottom stuff because I only want that curves adjustment happening on the sky. This helps me target it a little bit, and then the brush is just kind of a big sweeping cleanup in the end. So let's see, does it affect just the sky? Yes, it does. Maybe, you know what, let's paint back in a little bit down there. Yeah. Okay. Let's pop it up and see. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Is that looking good or what? 
Cool. So, um, oh, one last thing. You know what? I want to crop in some of the left edge here because it'll just help with the rule of thirds and it will remove some of that dominant dark stuff on the left hand side. And ba boom, now we are all done. Do we want to take a look at the before and after? Here we go. Here's the before and the after and the before and the after. Holy crap, isn't that amazing and sexy what you can do with five minutes and a little bit of Photoshop know-how. Very, very cool. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you'll notice that I did most of the processing within Adobe Camera Raw. If you're not sure what Adobe Camera Raw is or how to use it, I have a complete guide right here on my website. I go through every single tool, how to use them, global adjustments, targeted adjustment, targeted adjustment tool, lens corrections, everything you need to know about excellent editing in Adobe Camera Raw. You can click right here. That'll take you to the complete guide to Adobe Camera Raw on my website. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see your photo edited in five minutes here on Pro Photo Tips, click this link, join the Pro Photo Tips group on Facebook, upload and get feedback from your friends. Or please join my newsletter where I send out photography tips and assignments that you can follow to improve your own photography. Until next time, you guys have fun and happy shooting.